Hello, my name is Sharon Turnbull and I'm an Organisational Development Advisor with Capital Horizons. And in this short video clip, I'd in, like to introduce an article that um, I've written that I hope that you will read, um, which is about how to build sustainable futures and in particular the leadership um, and the way of thinking about leadership that is needed um, in order to think about building sustainability, engaging people in um, working in a more sustainable way. Um, in the paper I'll say a lot more about um, some of the ideas that uh, people, people who have specialised in this have written about and try and pull together some of those ideas so that they make some practical sense for you as uh, leaders. Um, I guess the paper um, is structured around the very well known but very useful idea of the triple bottom line that's thinking by John Elkington and others. So what is triple bottom line? Um, well many of you will know this already but the point one is about balancing uh, people with point two the planet and three the economy. So what do we mean by people? Uh, in terms of the sustainability agenda um, usually when we talk about people it's about um, trying to address social injustice and trying to balance the world's resources so that everybody can leave, lead a life of quality and, um, and where everybody has enough. Um, planet, of course, we mean by that that we all need to tread very softly and carefully um, on this planet and think about the resources that we consume and think about and that in terms of future generations. And thirdly, the economy, of course, thinking long term and, and balancing financial considerations with the needs of the planet and the needs of people on the planet. Of course, when we talk about people, we're talking about the generations that live on this planet now, but we're also thinking about um, future generations. Um, on our website, there's a lot more to, to read around this subject. So um, my article is predominantly about thinking about the, um, the leadership aspects. Um, and of course, how do we change the world? How do we change the people in our organisations? Well, um, I suppose one of the best place, places to start with that is with ourselves. And um, I love the quote, you've probably seen it on the Capital Horizons website um, by Margaret Mead. And she talks about, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So I think hopefully running through um, my article is the idea that it's about a cumulative impact that we can have when we work with others towards a common agenda. Um, I've been quite inspired. Um, I've worked a bit with the Welsh Government and um, I've been inspired by the um, Pathbreaking Wellbeing of Future Generations Act that, that is in Wales. And um, in that Act they uh, define sustainable development as improving the way that we can achieve our economic, social, environment and environmental and um, cultural well-being. And um, actually, we don't often see the cultural um, well-being side um, reflected in most of the sustainability literature, but um, I think that's an important one, and particularly um, I understand why they've included that in Wales, but I think it's probably something that we should also take into account, um, that actually sustaining and maintaining the cultures that we've built our world on can be very important indeed. Um, so I would like to, they've done a lot of research into sustainable development and sustainable leadership, so I thought um, in the paper I start by talking about um, some of the core ideas um, in that act and how they've been rolling it out. Um, and they have a number of key principles in the act, and they call it the overall the sustainability um, wellbeing principle. Um, and just to say something about those, the first is... Um, uh, thinking long term. The second is about prevention, and I'll explain what all that is um, in a minute. Thirdly is about integration, um, collaboration, which is the subject of a whole um, paper, in fact, in this series. The final one is involvement. So let me look at those 
in a bit more depth um, so that you as leaders can think about what they might mean for you. The first one is thinking long term. Um, so that's obviously about balancing the demands of the short term, the year end, the, the bottom line um, and paying the bills uh, and so on. We're thinking more long term, thinking about next generations, thinking about the future of the organisation, thinking about um, its second curve. So where is the future going to come from for the organisation? Very important indeed. Um, the second is about prevention. So how do we as leaders get close enough to the data, close enough to what's happening at the sharp end to be able to, where possible, step in and um, prevent problems from uh, occurring. Not always easy. Causes and effects are not that simple these days. We live in a complex world um, and of course um, many of the things that occur within organisations and in our external context are the result of many interconnected causes. So um, it's uh, prevention of course is an aspiration but something that we need to take very seriously as leaders um, and think about how we work with our colleagues to prevent um, issues, problems um, and so on from occurring. How do we get ahead of the curve? Um, the third is integration um, and that is to be aware that we are living in an interconnected um, world and so thinking about how our actions impact on the actions of others, thinking about how all our organisations impact on other organisations and ultimately on the planet, on our society and so on. Fourth, collaboration. It's the subject of a whole article in this series and uh, I've done a little uh, video clip on that too. Um, very important in today's world to think about who we collaborate with, um, how we collaborate, um, the purpose of our collaborations, how do we configure um, the relationships that we build, how do we understand our stakeholders and how we can work with them, how we can influence them, how we can mobilise the power of our own power plus the power of our um, stakeholders. Um, uh, fifthly, involvement. Um, we can't uh, lead single-handedly, nobody can, um, however amazing a leader is, um, they will always need to share um, the uh, thinking and the ideas and the problem solving and solutions with others and um, much leadership thinking today is about how do we as leaders build a more distributed, more shared form of leadership, a, uh, a leadership that where um, an organisation where everybody is involved in leading within their own domains and where we can um, collectively lead. And I think that becomes very important um, so that we start to think about a leadership process um, and not simply the actions of a single leader. Um, so these ideas from um, the Welsh Government I think are particularly useful and I think about thinking about future generations make it re makes it real, makes it feel human. We are talking about um, our children, our children's children and um, this isn't some abstract idea um, and if we, the more we can do to, um, uh, to uh, mitigate against the um, impact of how we live on this planet then the more we're going to feel that we've um, made a difference uh, I think. Um, many many people have written about how to become a more sustainable leader, um, lots of ideas and um, in fact uh, uh, in the end um, many of the ideas are um, very much parallel to ideas of how to be an effective leader anyway so um, this is not some very different form of leadership but it's about becoming more aware of um, the our impact um, and to become more connected uh, as leaders. So Marion Glott um, from Melbourne wrote a paper about knowledge management and the links uh, to HRM um, and she looks at uh, responsible leadership, she distills responsible leadership into three main domains, roles and relationships, strategic thinking and learning. Um, and then she talks about different ways that we can build our relationships, that we can think strategically and um, that we can um, continuously learn as leaders. And we also have a, 
an article in this series about learning because we think that uh, c continuously learning is um, is a, a leadership art. It's a hugely important leadership capability, and it can differentiate between um, success, successful leadership, and um, leadership that that fizzles out. Um, so, um, other ideas, uh, Laura Quinn and Jane Norton's article, Beyond the Bottom Line, Practicing Leadership for Sustainability, um, published in um, Leadership in Action in 2004. Uh, they also look at um, how leaders need to grip um, the sustainability agenda. They talk about focusing commitment over a long period of time. They talk about communi communicating um, ideas around sustainable development, sustainable futures, um, and thinking about how to build buy-in at all levels, and being persistent, again something that uh, frequently differentiates successful leadership from less successful, is um, consistency and persistence in an agenda, so making, making the agenda very clear to the people around you, um, and working with them, and then role modelling, of course, um, the ideas and the values that um, you're trying to work with inside the organisation. Um, and um, they also suggest that if you have um, a sustainable development agenda, how can you share that with um, your partners? How can you share it with your suppliers and your customers, even with your competitors, so that people understand where you're coming from? Um, and I think that that advice is, is extremely good. And... Uh, in the end, a lot of these checklists are um, connected with leading change and managing change because often putting a sustainability agenda into, into an organisation um, and thinking about the triple bottom line and making sure that other people in the organisation understand where you're coming from and um, want to buy into that is essentially a um, managing change process. And when you're managing change, some of the key um, requirements are consistency and persistence and patience, actually, because it takes time to transform an organisation um, and it takes time to change a culture. And particularly where you're talking about changed values and not simply changed behaviour. Um, and you can't do that overnight. You can't wake up one morning and tell the people in your organisation that they're going to transform into sustainability leaders along with yourself. What you can do is gradually introduce the ideas of sustainability, the purpose, the reason, the rationale for becoming more sustainable in the organisation, find some champions who you can work with, who can also champion ideas across the organisation, um, and um, perhaps pick some um, low-hanging fruit, some easy wins, and work with those, uh, and then perhaps take on the bigger challenges at the next phase. So these things, there's no simple formula, and which is why there's so much been written about this, but essentially um, sustainability leadership is about good leadership practice. Um, Redicott wrote a very important book, which is worth a read, called Leadership for Environmental Sustainability, um, and he talks about two key ideas, the first being um, for leaders to understand the importance of time, culture and context. Um, so by time he means thinking about pace and the short, medium and long. By culture, thinking about how you actually transform the way people work and operate and what are the norms and what, what is acceptable and not acceptable. And context is thinking about what is doable within the wider context and also how the wider context, so that could be the political context or the economic context or the global context, how that can support you in um, doing what you want to do. Um, and the second key idea that, that um, he introduces is the importance of adaptive learning and um, interdependence, systems thinking, um, and I think also for um, successful sustainability leadership, understanding that complexity and that the idea of systems thinking, the idea of our interconnectivity uh, within an organisation and across organisations is very important and um, 
whilst it sounds complex, um, I think probably most of us would agree that um, the world is complex. So it's how do we understand how it operates and how we can um, work with that complexity. Um, very nice book by Simon Weston, an old colleague of mine from Lancaster University um, at the time, uh, was is called Leadership, a Critical Text. And um, he likes to label uh, sustainability leadership, eco-leadership, and I guess that has a sort of sense of the eco-warrior, the fact that um, leaders who are uh, have sustainability uh, in their focus are tend to be rather cutting edge and rather transformational and certainly often find themselves fighting the mainstream. Um, and he talks about four points. He says it's very important, uh, as Redicop has said, very important to take a systemic and holistic um, stance and also an ethical stance, so to understand the ethics of what we're trying to do within our organisation, but also see the whole um, and not just the parts, and that is the whole of probably our economic and political system, our social systems, our global um, uh, system too, uh, and understand our place within it. Um, he also talks about the relationship between leadership and the environment, and um, actually accepting that this is a, a synergistic relationship. We're not in control. Humans are for a long time thought that they can control anything. Of course, we can't. Um, all we can do is we can take play our part in um, shaping um, what happens within our, our world. Um, he also talks about the interconnect, interconnected nature of the planet, both from a, a local micro to a global and macro um, uh, level. And, um, and finally, he talks about democratising the way that we operate. And um, here at Capital, we've been talking a lot about the democratisation of leadership. So sharing leadership, helping others to become more effective as leaders in their own domains. Um, so all this probably sounds um, rather challenging, um, but actually much of it is about becoming adaptive leaders, becoming systems thinkers and um, becoming willing to think in the long term um, about uh, the impact of what we're producing, um, the work that we're doing and how it impacts on people uh, as well as how it impacts on uh, the planet and um, the economy and our own bottom line. So in the uh, article I talk more, I give you some examples um, of cases of people who have uh, tried to, to become more sustainable um, in the way that they operate um, and I think that probably would help you to take courage um, and I think um, the final thing I want to say about this is that um, leading sustainably, leading for sustainable futures, leading for um, the next generation is not easy. Um, it's very easy to fall into the um, more simple, straightforward um, focus on um, the short term and the immediate and the things that we're being measured on right now. Um, but I think those leaders who take a conscious um, decision to become um, more sustainability focused, more um, responsible, um, to think about the ethics of what they do and what their organisation does, um, can feel um, much more um, content with their contribution. And I think um, this is something that we are working with um, many leaders, many organisations, um, to, to try to achieve. This is, this is a journey, this is not a single act, this is something that we all want to aspire to but, but of course requires um, some resilience and um, so also some courage. Um, so thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the article and um, good luck with your, your journeys.